Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, we began the boot in the last video, so let's continue on with this. What we need to do is create some edges for these pieces and also work on getting these to fit together a little better. So let's work on that real quick. I'm just going to take this edge and scale it in and move it back a bit, kind of like that. So it just fits a little better. Maybe I'll take this and move it down some into that shoe sole. And if we take a look at this one here, do we need to bring these up a bit? I kind of feel like these are a little too high. So I think I'll control, click, and drag this. And maybe do the same thing over here. And let's bring those up a bit. I don't think we need them to be quite that low. Something like that. And I think this is pretty good here. I think that's a pretty good size. So let's go ahead and just select this edge here and extrude and scale in a bit. All right, so let's take this piece. We already have some thickness up here. We'll probably need to close that off around the leg. But down here on this edge, let's see if we can extrude and scale in here. I think that'll be okay. We'll work on it a little bit more once we put the subdivision surface modifier on it. And let me come up here and take a look at this area here. This looks like it could be scaled in the Y a bit and moved. And I think we'll probably need to extrude this down and then scale it in some here so it closes off around the leg. And now let's take a look at adding subdivision surface modifiers on here. So I'm going to click Add Modifier Subdivision Surface, take the view up to 2, Smooth Shading, and now let's go ahead and begin adding edge loops to hold these edges here. So I'll insert them there, Maybe one up here, maybe one down here. So I'm just trying to insert edge loops where I think the corners can be a little bit sharper. Maybe one right out here like this. Let's come down here and do the same thing around here. So in here I'll maybe add two. So there's some more point pulling that I can do here. But I think I'll work on this part now here. Let's go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier to it as well and smooth it. And OK, that's going to look OK, I think. We may need to come in and adjust that like these edges here, scale out a bit and move into place, things like that. But I think that'll work. And then let's take a look at this. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the toe piece. Like so. And we do well to add an edge loop here and an edge loop here to hold those. And then the sole of the shoe, let's add a subdivision surface modifier and see what happens with that. It's going to collapse quite a bit. So we can fix that. Let's add two edge loops here and scale these in the Z to get them closer to the edge, like that. And let's do one up here, get that out closer to the edge. Now we could smooth this out a bit by going back to the Sculpt tool and with that smooth brush we can maybe click around in here and smooth this up just a bit just to help us out from having to pull points quite so much. I'm going to go back to my character screen layout and take a look at it. And let's create this piece now. So I think what I'll do is select this piece and just right here maybe I'll move the cursor to that point right there. And then I'll press Shift A and create a cylinder it's still got 12 sides to it here, and the cap fill, let's change to nothing. 
and I'll scale it down and maybe rotate it around the Y, so R, Y, 9, 0, like that. Let's scale it in the X sum. There we go. And maybe put it in place right around in here, let's say. I'll tab into edit mode and just select this edge and scale it down a bit, like that. And then I'll hit E and extrude that in some and E and push that inward like that. Now we just need a piece for that blue stone or whatever it is. I'll select this object and move the cursor to it. Let's hit Shift A and add a UV sphere. Let's tab into edit mode, go to face mode, and I'll just hit the B key to border select and let's just select all of these faces down on the bottom and hit X and delete faces. And now we can rotate this around the Y, R, Y, 90, and scale that down. And let's try and put this into place, kind of like that. We should probably scale it so it's a little bit flatter, so I'll scale it in the X. There we go, move it out a bit. Let's go back to the default view and I'll zoom in and let's try and add subdivision surface modifiers for these as well. So I'll begin with this, smooth that a bit, smooth shading, and add a few edge loops here. Like that. And now this piece here, let's add one to that as well. Scale that in a bit, and there we go. I think what I'll do as well is take this piece, take that edge and just scale it out a bit. I want this to kind of flare out some more. Something like that. Maybe move the whole thing up and in. All right. So now what needs to happen is we need to mirror this over to the other side and then mirror the whole boot over to the other side as well. We'll do that in the next video, as well as work on the other parts of the character's uniform. So I'll see you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode. And as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics, like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles render engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program, GIMP, to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the Mac. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation.
Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.